So you've got ready to build your bit X and you're looking at the schematic and down here it says L1, L2, L3, 2 micro Henry's, 36 turns of number 28 gauge wire over nylon tap washer. You know, what's a tap washer? Where do I find them? Well probably an easier way to do is to simply use toroid cores instead of tap washers. Here in the United States toroid cores are relatively easy to find and to obtain and they're inexpensive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process we go through to wind L1, L2, and L3, a 2 microhenry coil on a toroid. We have a couple of tools that are available that make this pretty easy to do. You can go to kitsandparts.com and they have a toroid calculator. I've decided I wanted to use a T37-6 core because I have some, they're easily obtainable and they're just about the right core to do this particular job. So if we look up here, I've, you put in your inductance you want and then just click anywhere else and it modified it to 2.08 because that's what's going to we're going to end up with for the number of turns. And if we look down here, it says it'll give us 26 turns. 26 turns on a T37-6 coil will give us 2.08 microhenries. So we can take that and also at the same time just tell us we need about 15 inches of wire. So we could go directly with that and begin winding cores, but there's also another tool, it's just a new one that he's got on his website. So let's take a look at that also. Here I've selected for a T37-6 core and here's all the specifications for it. And down here at the bottom Down here at the bottom of the computer page, we simply enter the inductance we want and hit the calculate button and it comes out and tells us I need 25.8 turns for a 2 microhenry. Remember on the other one it showed us that we'd end up with 2.06 microhenries because we had 26 turns. Well you can't make 8 tenths of a turn on a, on a coil. You either have to make the whole thing or nothing. So here we're going to use 26 turns and it'll give us 2.08 microhenries and it's going to take 14.9 inches of wire. So I think I can add a little bit more to that. But we will have to see. Well, I'd rather have a little left over than not have quite enough. One thing left to do is we need one more check. If I'm using 14 gauge wire I'll guarantee I can't get 26 turns through it through this size core. So what we need to do is double check and see what size wire will actually work that we can put 26 turns in this T37-6 core. Actually using my example here's for T37 cores if I wanted to run number 14 wire, I could actually get four turns through that. So we want 26 turns though, so if we look down there, if I use 24 gauge I can only get 22. These are without stacking in the core. And here if I use 26 gauge wire I can get 29. So it looks like I'd want to use either 26 or 28. I think I have some 26. So. If I got some 26, we'll make an attempt at that. All these tools and charts I've been using are straight off of the Kitchen Parts website. So you can go and access that. And he also has the toroids for sale. So it's a, almost a one stop shopping place. So now we know what we need. How do we get the parts? 
Well, if you go to kitsandparts.com website, he has this order form for his cores, and he has T37-6 cores, 25 pieces for $5. If you really want to go in production, you can get 100 of them for $14. When you order that, what you'll get is a little package like this with the cores. So here's 25 pieces for $5. So we have the, the cores. The next thing we're going to need to find is going to be the wire. There's a couple different places we can find that. QRPKits.com has a toroid and core and wire kit. If you order that, you get 50 feet of number 28 of red and 50 feet of green wire which the two different colors are great if you're winding bifiler and trifiler transformers helps you keep the the different windings separated from each other and it's got 25 pieces of the different cores so you can go to that that's one place and Doug has great customer service I've dealt with him several times and completely happy with every time I've bought something from him. The only disadvantage I can see with dealing with Doug or with somebody that I've mentioned so far is you have a limited number of sizes. This is one place I've found and I've bought wire from that has any size you want and is reasonable. It's powerworks.com. It's P-O-W-E-R-W-E-R-X.com and if we look at their sales sheet they start with 14, 16, 18. They go all the way to 36. But what we wanted was more on this. We wanted some 26. Down here at the bottom, they have 26 and 28 gauge. And 26 gauge, if you buy a quarter pound spool of it, it's got 314 feet for $5.82. That's not enough for you. Well, that's enough to wind quite a few coils, but uh, you can get down here by a 10-pound spool of it, which has got 12,570 feet. That'll wind a lot of cores. And then they go right on down to any, any size, all the way down to number 36 here. So if you need some 32, quarter-pound spool of 32 has 1,217 feet. $6.70. So that's another good place to buy the wire. So now you can buy the a kit from QRPKits.com that has the wire and some common cores or you can buy the individual cores from KitsAndParts.com and you can buy the individual wire from PowerWorks. So now we have all the supplies we need so now it's time to wind some coils. Just grabbed my bag of cores, wasn't sealed at the top, tipped out, hit the floor. Now I don't have quite as many good cores as I once had. Good thing I had the bag of 25. Have some extras. I have some wire here that I got from QRP Kits, Doug. It's I have red, green, and brown here. I'm gonna wind one out of the red, then I'll wind one out of the brown. They're the same size wire, we should get the same inductance out of both of them, but the difference is going to be the red is heat strippable, the brown is not. So the brown is going to be a lot more of a problem to strip and get the enamel off, but I'll show you the way I do it. So with these three colors, I can do trifiler transformers and easily identify each winding. That's the advantage of having some different colors of wire. Remember our program said that we needed 14.9 inches of wire. I'm going to use this nice looking green stuff because I think it's pretty. But I'm going to measure out a little extra. I think I'll go with 18 inches because I've got plenty of wire and that will allow me to not have to worry about having a little extra stuck out of the ends. So we'll just measure it off and we'll cut it and 
will be all set. There's quite a few different ways to wind these, but I like to do it this way. And I'm going to just lightly cinch down on the core with my little vise here. If you cinch down too tight, you'll break the core because they are somewhat fragile. And I'm going to start off with running one winding through and since I have plenty of extra, or I should have, I'm going to go ahead and leave about this much, an inch or so, sticking out. And every pass through the core counts as one turn, so I already have one turn, even if I just went straight through and didn't do anything else. So now I'm going to take and snug it up, and I'm going to just pass the end back through. And until you get a few turns on, you have to hang on to the loose tail. And I'm going to snug the wire down and pull it taut because that will actually pull it down to get rid of most of the air gap along the core. There's two turns. Here's three turns. Pull it snug. I tightened it down just a little bit more in the vise because it's moving around. Four turns. Then you could take and push them together because we're going to use most of this core up before we're done. Five turns. And I'm going to shut the camera off and continue on because it's hard to talk to you and to keep track of the number of turns all at the same time. But if we take a look at what we've got so far, there's how it looks right now. I have ten turns on there now, so what I'm going to do is rotate the core and clamp down part of the area where I have the windings in the vise so I can get more open core. Once again you want to be careful you don't want to clamp down too tight because you can fracture the core. I stopped at 10 because that was a good number to stop with. So now I've got a bunch of open space to continue on with. As you get more on there and they get a shorter tail it's easier to work with. There's 11 this goes pretty fast. Well, 13, I'm just pushing wire down my finger each time. Keep the core open. 13, 14, you can see it goes really easy. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have all 26 of my windings on there. But now what we want to do is leave a little gap like we have here at the tail. Get over here where you can see it between them. And we want to kind of equalize out these turns here so we don't have any big gaps and it looks nice and even. So the wire spacing is relatively even around the core. Doesn't have to be perfect. If it looks good, that's probably good enough. And there we have our coil. Now, I have that much left over one end, and I have quite a bit left over in the other end. So I'm going to not cut it too close just yet, because I want to make sure I have at least enough inductance. So I'm going to leave the tails long. But leaving the tails long, we're going to make it read high on inductance. So it would actually read, it's going to read more than what we calculated, or should anyway. But we're going to make sure it does before we do any cutting off because you can always take off but it's pretty hard to add wire. This green wire that I have is heat strippable so the way we're going to strip that is take our soldering iron, get a glob of solder on it, 
come up from underneath and we're going to put add plenty more solder and if we get that hot it'll burn the enamel right off. We'll do that on both ends. This stuff's a lot nicer to work with and strip than the other. So once we have that You should be able to see a tin wire on the ends. And they are tin there. You can see it. There's their silver. It's hard to show in the light, but uh, if you get them just right, you can see the silver or the solder where it's actually tinned. 